and let's work through this, folks. Here we go. So we'll start on the front side there. And again, this is two different quizzes, but we're gonna do them both. First one, change 250, 250 degrees into radians. Anybody remember how to do that? Well, you gotta set up a proportion and cross multiply. That's exactly right. So what does our proportion look like? Who remembers? Pi over 180. Pi over 180 equals x over 250. Now this is no calculator, so you're able to have to be able to handle this, but you can. It's 180x equals 255. And then we'll divide by 180. So x equals, now when you go to reduce this, it's easy. Divide by 10, now we're getting rid of those, or those zeros. So it's 25 pi over 18. Done. That's all there is to it. Not making it hard. Now the next one's one of these guys. And I told you when we talked about this, well, let me just put the numbers in. The radius is eight and the arc length is 10. There's a formula associated with that setup, arc length. Who remembers the formula, Abby? Arc length equals radian times radian. Exactly. I was doing our calculator at this point. Radius times radians. Now, what do I know? I know my arc length is 10. I know my radius is 8. The only thing I don't know is my angle. But I can figure that out. Just solve that equation. Theta is 10 eighths or 5 fourths. And that would be 5 fourths what? Centimeters. Centimeters? That's 5 fourths radians. That's an angle, folks, right? Centimeters would be the radius and the arc length. The angle measure is either radians or degrees, and we use this formula, so it's radians. Got that? Um, I don't know if I need it or not. You can check. Thank you. All right, change 5 pi over 6 into degrees. This one's really easy. Who remembers how to do this? Pi is 180, right? Pi radians is 180 degrees. So we'll just put a 180 in there. Oh, this is boring. Anybody need to use a calculator? Guys, what's 180 divided by 6? 30. And what's 30 times 5? 150. You don't need a calculator. I'm not going to give you numbers like 17 and 11 and weird stuff. I want you to be able to change one kind of measurement into the other. All right, you okay with that? Well, guess what? We got a whole other set at the bottom of the page, so let's do it again. The same exact kinds of problems. So here we go. 8 pi over 3, change it into degrees. Well, we just did that. Somebody new, tell me what to do if I want to change 8 pi over 3 into degrees. Donovan. So pi radians is 180 degrees. So this is 8 times 180 over 3. I would recommend you do the division first so the numbers don't get so big. What's 180 divided by 3? 60 times 8 is 480. 180 divided by 3 times 8. You don't have to do that in your head. If you need, if you want to write that over here to the side and figure it out, that's perfect. All right, change negative 100 into radians. Negative 100 into radians. All right, someone new, tell me how to set that up. Pi over 
This is your proportion, pi over 180 equals x over negative 100, perfect. Cross multiply. which is 5 over 9. Don't forget the negative. We have 5 pi over 9. Angles can be negative. It just means the rotation is this way. So you can have a negative 60 degree angle and negative pi over 3 or negative 5 pi over 9 angle. It just means you're rotating clockwise instead of counterclockwise. Okay, and we got our situation here with our arc length again. This time we know the arc is 15 and the central angle is 5 pi over 4. And we want to find the radius. What's our formula? 15 equals x or r. Um, times five pi over 15 four. equals r times 5 pi over 4 because arc length equals radius times radians, right? Now, I don't care how you solve this, you got some options. A step by step methodically would be times by 4. So 60 equals 5 pi times r and then divide by 5 pi what's 60 divided by 5 13 12 so we have 12 over pi inches as our reduced final answer Now that one is inches, because isn't it a length? Yeah. Okay, so again, that's two different quizzes. This is a quiz I gave last year over this. Okay, two different quizzes. Now on the back side is the calculator part. Again, two of them. So change 115, 11, 12 into decimal degrees. Okay, so we all need calculator. We're going to change it into decimal degrees. So what do we do? 115, who remembers? Angle. Second angle degrees. And then 11, second angle, put down to minutes. And then the wacky one, 12, Alpha plus. Alpha plus. And then hit equals. So for the answer, where do you want us to stop after the decimal? Do you want us to stop in like the um, or let's, let's just say, let's stop after the thousand. Okay. There's no directions there, so let's stop after the thousand. So that would be 115.187. Pretend it says round to the thousand. That would be the answer, right? Easy. Now go the other way. Who remembers how to do this? We start with 88.63. How do we get the degrees, minutes, seconds from that? Abby? Second half and then hit four. Yep. Second angle DMS. And that one is 88, 37, 48. Right? Draw an angle in standard position that measures negative 160 degrees. Now, do not get this confused with navigation. This is a math angle in standard position. So you remember they start here. They start there. 
and I just got done telling Donovan, what does the negative do for me? Makes it go down. So this angle is going to start here where standard position angles always start. Not navigation, that's different. This is just a, a math angle. So here I go, negative 160. Where am I going to stop? Right there. There's negative 160 degrees. I'm stopping there because isn't this 180 over here? Halfway around? So I stop before I get to 180. Okay, number four. The other number four. How do we change it into degrees, minutes, seconds? Abby told us just a minute ago. Type in your angle and then what? Second, Second angle, angle EMS. EMS. 142 degrees, 43 minutes, and 48 seconds. Is that what you got? Change this one into decimal degrees. So Lillian, you're typing away back there. God bless you. What are you typing? So since it's a direction, we do not start here. We start here. Directional angles start at due north. Remember that? Math angles start right here on the positive x-axis. So where would 315 be? 315 would actually be Northwest, isn't it? Isn't it right in the middle of north and and um, west? But this is the picture of it. Oops, not negative. This is the picture of it. That's what you would draw. Will you ever have a negative navigation angle? No. I don't think so. I shouldn't say no so quickly. I I I've not seen that, but I'm not a navigator, so I can't really say for absolutely sure. But if you did, it would mean going this way, okay? Normally, like if I wanted, so one way of describing that would be 315 degrees. If I, if I wanted to use the 45 to describe it, I would normally say north 45 west. Because what that means is point north and then veer off 45 degrees to the west. So. That's the way I think it would be written. I've never seen it written as negative 45. All right, so we just took two quizzes. We have a whole weekend in between and I don't see until Tuesday, right? So Tuesday, we're gonna have a half page quiz. It's gonna have these six problems on it. Are you clear? Okay, all right, let's move on here. We got some important stuff to do today. Oh, I went ahead while they were working on my computer today. I ran some stuff off. So I'm going to go ahead and give you some review material. Um, for this chapter. We aren't ready for this yet, but I'm going to go ahead and give it to you so I don't forget. So 
put this in a safe place so that when I say get out this review sheet, you'll know where it's at. thing you might want to do now that you absolutely have to but it might make your life a little easier if you change this radian measure into degrees so we'll have 180 over 6 which is 30 so we have the tangent of 30 degrees okay now what do we do we're gonna draw the triangle we're gonna draw it that's right so I'm going to draw the angle, it's 30 degrees, so here's 30, remember it's a math angle so it starts here, right? So there it is, and I'm dropping my perpendicular, making my triangle, this is a 60, right? What are the sides of that triangle? If you can't remember, look at your colored sheet, but you gotta, you gotta start memorizing that colored sheet. Jeff? Uh, one, two, and uh, okay. yeah. yeah. And it's not enough to remember that the sides of a 30, 60, 90 are one, two, and three, three. You gotta get them in the right spots. So across from the one is the 30. Across from the 60 is root three and across from the 90 is two. They have to go in the right spots if you're gonna get the right answer. All right, now I want the tangent. What's tangent? So, uh, toa. Opposite over adjacent. So, with regard to this angle, you always look at the angle of the origin. This is always your angle. Never look at that one. This is your angle. So opposite over adjacent would be one over root three, which is root three over three. Cosine pi over three. 180 over three, so that'll be cosine 60. my picture. Now it's the same triangle, but things are rearranged a little bit, right? Here's the 30. Across from the 30 is 1. Across from the 60 is root 3, and the hypotenuse is 2. I want cosine. Ka, so katoa, adjacent over hypotenuse. Okay, I yet have been doing this for so many years I can't even remember. Write down, so katoa. That's your key, kids, that will help you. Cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse, so the answer would be one half.
Okay. Any question about that? Because we're moving into a new problem now that's different. Okay, so now we're going to get our calculators out. We're going to round to the 10,000 and we're going to use our calculator to find the secant of 10 degrees. Now, first thing we need to do is go to mode and make sure we're in degrees. Your calculator is going to do exactly what you tell it to do. So if you're in radians, it's going to find the secant of 10 radians. Are you in degrees? I'm not. Let me check. Fix that. Go to mode and highlight degrees. Okay. Now. You paid a hundred and some bucks. Somebody paid a hundred and some bucks for this calculator. And it does not even have a secant button on it. Just ridiculous. So now we need to go back to our color sheet, our pink sheet. And we have to remember that secant is what? It's the reciprocal of cosine. So to get this on your calculator, man, the only way to do it, okay? I know you might have other ideas, not gonna work. The only way to do it is to say one divided by cosine 10. Secant is the reciprocal of the cosine, that means one over the cosine. So we'll just type one divided by cosine 10 and round it off to the 10,000. So 1.0154, that's what you should get. The only ones you're gonna be able to type in are sine, cosine, and tangent. The rest of them, you're going to have to do one over something. Okay, next, tangent 28 degrees, 11 minutes. Well, this is an easy one, because it's a tangent. So you'll press tangent, and then you know how to type this in, right? This is on your quiz. You need to be able to type this in. So just type tangent, 28 degrees, 11 minutes, and hit equals, so tangent, 28, 11 minutes. What'd you come up with? 5, 5, 3, 5, 9. I think it would be 5, 8. Isn't there a 2 after the 8? Yeah. yeah, so we won't round that up. We only round up when it's 5 or bigger. So 0.5358? Now I'm going to skip C for the time being because why? Why do you think I'm skipping C? Because it's most things in the diameter. It's most things in it. It's a radian. See that? There's no degree mark. It's a radian. And in order to do that, I'll have to change my calculator, which is fine. But then when I get back to the degree problems, I got to change it back again. So I'm going to go ahead and finish the degree problems. Are there any more? We've done A and B. E. E is a degree. So we're going to do that one next so that we don't have to keep switching our calculator back and forth.
stay okay? All right, now all the rest of the problems, would you agree, are radian problems? If they don't have a degree mark, they're radian. Once they all circle, radian. So let's change our calculator into radian mode. And we have to type cosecant by pi over 16. Wait a minute. Cosecant. How do I type that in? What's cosecant? One divided by. One divided by sum. So I will literally type one divided by sine by pi over 16. When you hit sine, you're automatically going to get parentheses. Just do 5 pi divided by 16. You don't even need to close those parentheses, but you can if you want, and you'll get the right answer. So 1 divided by sine by, use your pi button, divided by 16. 1.2027, does that sound about right? Everybody okay with that? Next one, cosine pi over nine. Oh, easy peasy. We have a button that says cosine. Cosine pi divided by nine. 0.9397. I know it all. Wait, I know you can't possibly be bored. Get your calculator and start pressing buttons. Is it dead? No. Okay, then here's some good ones to get. Make sure you charge it. All right, cotangent two. One divided by tan. One divided by tan two. You don't change the angle. You just do one divided by. So one divided by tan two. Negative 0.4577. I can't remember. This has happened to us before, but the trig functions can all be negative. Sines, cosines, tangents, they can all be negative. And you'll see how that happens in the next section. Are you alright with that? challenge you a little bit because I'm going to ask you to think backwards. Use your pink sheet. Keep your pink sheet handy. Here's the triangle that I was drawing a minute ago with some of those other problems that we started with. And I have no idea what my angle is. Remember your angle always goes at the origin. Always the angle goes at the origin. I don't know what it is, but I know that its sine is one half. I'm doing this without a calculator. Now tell me what I know about my picture if the sine is one half. You know the opposite and the hypotenuse. So the opposite is one and the hypotenuse is two? Yes. Because of, I raised it, Sokotoa. Yeah. Now, if I'm doing this without a calculator, this has to be a special triangle, okay? So if I see a one and a two, I can do the Pythagorean theorem, but I should automatically know this side is what? That's one. Root three. So what kind of triangle is that? A 30, 60, 90? And the angle that I want is the one that is across from the one. 30. And the angle across from the one is 30. So theta is 30 degrees. Now 
Now we are to answer in degrees, which we did, but we, now we gotta change that to radians. Could we set up a proportion and do that? Yeah. But I think you could also think about it logically. We know a whole pie is 180. So what would 30 be? If a whole pie is 180, wouldn't 30 be a sixth of that? So the answer is pi over six radians. But if you wanna go ahead, I mean, it's okay. It's okay to set up your proportion and solve it. But with these special angles, you can usually just kind of reason it out. But one way or the other, we gotta come up with pi over six. All right, tangent of theta is root three over one. I'm gonna go ahead and put that over one. All of the trig functions are fractions. So if I don't see a bottom, I'm gonna put a bottom there. What does that tell me about my triangle? Alexis? Opposite of root three and adjacent is one. And if I cared, the hypotenuse would be two, right? I don't need it. But clearly I have a 30, 60, 90 triangle. This time though, my angle is across from the root three. So this time it's a 60. How many radians is 60? Well, 60 is a third of 180. So wouldn't this be pi over three? I'm not trying to confuse you. I'm trying to save you some time. If you can think about that logically, you can always set up your proportion and solve it. Reduce it. You'll get pi over three. Secant is root two over one. triangle. The secant is root 2 over 1. Oh. What does that mean? It's the secant. opposite of cosine. It's the reciprocal of cosine. So cosine, so co, adjacent over hypotenuse. It's H over H. So secant will be hypotenuse over adjacent. Are you following? So root two over one like that. That's not a 30, 60, 90. It's a 45, 45. It's a 45, 45, 90. Those are the only two triangles I can have you do without a calculator. They're all gonna be 30, 60, 90, some version of that, or 45, 45, 90. Okay, so how big is the angle? It's across from a one. 45. So it is a 45, so my answer is 45 degrees. Anybody know what fraction of 180, 45 is? Four. It's four, so it's pi over four. But again, pi is to 180, as something is to 45. You can always, always, always do it that way. But 30 is a sixth of pi, 60 is a third of pi, and 45 is a fourth of pi. All right, one more. You're doing great. These are kind of tricky. Cosine is one half. Over hypotenuse. 
be careful. That is not a root two, that's a two. And in that triangle, that means this is a root three. Which is across, it's a 30, 60, 90. And the angle I want is across from the root three, so that angle is 60, which is a third of 180. Sit up, my friend. You feeling all right? Can you go to the nurse? Okay. Okay, everybody good? Okay. Six. Solve for the variable shown. Right, what does that mean? Let's look at this. This is a different sort of setup here. This is 57 degrees, this is 42, and this is Y. I have to figure out what Y is. I'll give you a hint. You're going to use sine, cosine, or tangent. You're going to use sine, cosine, or tangent. So I want you to look at the picture. This angle right here is 57. With regard to that angle, which side is this? Opposite, adjacent, or hypotenuse? This is the opposite side. I'm looking at the 57. I never look at the 90. I never look at that angle or this one. So this is the opposite side. What's this? Hypotenuse. There is the answer to your question. The sides involved in the problem are opposite and hypotenuse. So is this a sine, cosine, or tangent problem? Sine. Sine. So we'll say sine angle, it's always sine of the angle, like sine 60 or cosine 30, whatever, it's always sine of the angle, equals the opposite over the hypotenuse. That make sense? Now I need to figure out what y is. That's right. I want you to do it carefully. Some of you are going to just zip through this and some of you are going to make careless mistakes. So I'm solving for y. I got to get it out of the denominator. So I'm going to multiply both sides by y. Okay, so I just multiplied by y to get it out of the denominator. But now I need to get it by itself. So I'll divide by sine 57. That's a degree measure, right? I didn't label it in my equation, but that's a degree measure. So before I go to my calculator, what do I have to do? Change it back into degrees. This is so easy to screw up, guys. You've got to pay attention to your mode. I try, I don't always remember, but I try, as soon as I turn my calculator on when I'm in this chapter, I press mode to see what mode I'm in. And then, once I know I'm in degree mode, I think I am now, I type 32 divided by sine, sine, 100? Nearest hundred. So this is going to be 38.16. Would you agree with me? Yeah. Next. Same thing. So here's what I want you to do. I want you to see if you can figure out an equation like this one. This is the equation we started with. I want you to see if you can figure out the equation that you would use using sine, cosine, or tangent to solve that or to find x, to find x in that triangle.
Caroline, you're already typing, so you must have an equation. What's your equation look like? Your original, your very first step. I said 171 degrees equals 18 over there. Does it work for COVID? I would run and give her a great big hug because she is exactly right. Caroline, explain how you decided to use tangent. Um, because it involves the addition side and the opposite side. With that, if you look at that 71, this is the opposite and this is the adjacent. And the function that connects opposite and adjacent is tangent. Now, someone asked me yesterday or the day before, said, well, how come we don't use cotangent? Can you think about, could we? Absolutely, but why don't we? It's a lot more work. We don't have that button on our calculator, right? That's setting us up for more work. So we're gonna use sine, cosine, or tangent every time. So, how did you go about solving this, Caroline? Step by step here, what did you do? Um, I multiplied x on both sides. Perfect. And then I divided by 10, Exactly. So she's gonna type into her calculator, 18 divided by 1071. And I don't have to worry about mode because I'm still in degrees from the last problem. So what did you end up getting, Caroline? I got 6.197. So to the hundred, that would be 6.20? Yeah. be a math teacher, and I hope some of you do, will you ever just have triangles given to you? Like, here's this triangle, random triangle, find X. That's what math teachers do. Turn the page. This is what we do in real life. Trigonometry is used to solve all kinds of real life problems. Someday, when we have a little more time, I will share with you a story of how basic right triangle trigonometry, like you know how to do right now, saved a school corporation thousands of dollars, almost $100,000, okay? So let's work a few problems first. Draw a picture, write an equation, round to the nearest hundred. We got a squirrel sitting in the top of a tree we're gonna assume that our trees are perpendicular. In chapter five, we'll handle it when they're not, but right now our trees are perpendicular. So here's a squirrel sitting in the top of a tree, 52 feet tall. He is looking at a nut on the ground. So here's the nut, the squirrel is up here looking at the nut. I know this is a squirrel and a nut, and you're thinking, squirrel, no one cares about squirrels and nuts, but it could be a person looking at something on the ground. It could be a <coughs> airplane pilot looking at the airport. His angle of depression is 23 degrees. Now, the angle of depression here, I'm the squirrel, I'm looking straight ahead, and then I look down at the nut. This is my angle of depression, okay? Do not put it here. That is not the angle of depression. The angle of depression is from the horizontal, looking down. Now, the good news is, I, mean, I don't care for that, that angle because it's not even in my triangle. But the good news is, if that one's 23, isn't this one 23? Because we have something in geometry called alternate interior angles. When parallel lines are cut by a transversal, alternate interior angles are congruent. So here's the bottom line. Every time you do one of these problems, you're gonna put your angle right there because that is not only the angle of depression, but it's also the angle of 
elevation. If there's a worm in the nut looking up at the squirrel, that's his angle of elevation. They're always the same. So put it right there every time. Don't mess around with this one. Put it down here every time. Angle of elevation goes here. Angle of depression goes here. Find the distance from the nut to the base of the tree. Now we got a picture that looks just like the one Caroline solved, right? Sine, cosine, or tangent. It's going to be a tangent. So tan 23 equals opposite over adjacent. Gavin, you paying attention here? So x tan 23 equals 52. And x equals 52 <coughs> over tan 53. Or 23. You okay? Next, we have a seagull on the top of a lighthouse. So here's our lighthouse. Here's our seagull. And he spots a fish in the water below. So he's looking down and he sees a fish. The goal is 87 feet above sea level. And the goal is 230 feet from the fish. Now we have to be very literal with this. Where? Abby? You know that makes me twitch. The goal is up here and the fish is down here. The goal is 230 feet from the fish. Where do I put the 230? Oh, On the hypotenuse. Very good. If the goal had to fly to get the fish, that's how far he'd have to fly, right? Find angle of depression. Now what did I tell you about angles of elevation and depression? We're always going to put them here. Technically the angle you're looking for is this one, but it's the same as that one. So we're just going to use that one. This is your angle. Here are your sides. Sine, cosine, or tangent. Sine. This is opposite hypotenuse. So sine angle, so sine x, it's always the angle that's attached to the sine, or the cosine or the tangent. So sine x equals 87 over 230. Hmm. Hmm. This is different, isn't it? by itself, we need to undo the sign. So we use the inverse sign. When you are finding, you have that button on your calculator, by the way, find it. Should be right above the sign. When you are finding an angle, you do not use regular sign, cosine, or tangent. You use second sign. If you are finding an angle, it's second sine, second cosine, or second tangent, depending on your equation. So here we go. Second sine, 87 divided by 230, 
22.23 degrees. I should know that angle's in degrees. Because my calculator is set in degrees. So I want you to compare these two problems. If you know the angle, if you know it, then you use regular tan cotan tangent cosine or sine. If you're looking for the angle, then you must do second sine cosine or tangent. C. How far is an airplane from the airport? above the ground. Does that make sense to you? 5,000 goes there. And his angle of depression is 17 degrees. Here is the airplane. Here is the airport. That's how far he has to fly. Now the ground distance would be a different number, obviously. But we want to know how far the plane is from the airport. Sine, cosine, or tangent? Sine. Sine 17 equals 5,000 over x. Regular sign or second sign on this problem? Regular. regular sign. I use regular sign if I know the angle, and I know the angle. 5,000 divided by sine 17. Did you get 17,101.52 uh, feet? Two more and then I'm going to shut up, okay? You've done really well today. We've covered a lot of material. You've done really well. Let's do two more. Find the height of a flagpole. So now I got my flagpole and I want to know how tall it is. Have you noticed that all these pictures, all these problems have the same basic picture? Yeah, they're all red triangles. Uh, it makes a shadow 13 feet long when the angle of elevation of the sun is 59. Now, Mrs. Ford told you that your angle of elevation and depression always goes right here. Always. Where do I put the shadow? The shadow is 13 feet long. Where does he go? Donovan? On the ground. Shadows are on the ground, right? So he's down there, yeah. Sine, cosine, or tangent? Tangent. Tangent. So tan 59 equals x over 13. Did I go too fast? Is everybody clear on why it's tangent? So 13 tan 59 equals x. Just type it in. That's an easy one. 13 tan 59. The, shed, or the height of the flagpole is 21.64 feet. Standing 
a hundred feet from the building. A hundred feet from the building. Where does the hundred go? On the base. On the base. That's exactly right. He's not, let's say there's a owl up here. He's not a hundred feet from the owl. He's a hundred feet from the building. And we want to know, here's a hang up of elevation. Sine, cosine, or tangent? Tangent. So tangent of the angle equals 48 over 100. So what am I going to type in since I need the angle? Second tangent. Second tangent. Inverse tangent. Second tangent. Inverse tangent. 48 over 100. Second tangent. 48 divided by 100. I got 25.64 degrees. Woo! 4.2 homework due on Tuesday. <laughs>